What is up, YouTube fam? Thank hey y'all for tuning in with us once again. And we are heading into another a great... I don't know if I want to keep saying yeah, great. I don't know if it's great. I another know story. Great. That's what we're going to say. Story, y'all. Another story. Mm. This one is the twisted home invasion of K. Mortison. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Mortison. It don't sound like you are. It's gonna be close enough. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video I'm telling a story that takes us all the way to Utah to talk about a retired university professor. He done taught at Brigham Young University. That university just keeps coming up again and again. Wonder why? But Arabucco, he was just a grand old lad. He was a well-liked, you know, professor who now was living a good life. He was chilling with his Bunker and his prepper stash and his survivalism. That was all good though, until keywords? there was I'm, I'm, I'm a really home in that way. invasion. Now this story, it's quite reminiscent of a lot of the other stories I've talked about. It's like you took all them and put them into a blender. You'll get this one. You got a home invasion. You got people at the scene. You got people <coughs> allegedly tied up and being told a certain story, and then you kind of got. Eh. Well, what I mean by that is. They may, they may as well have said the dog did it, because the police probably would have found that more believable. That's the whole madness of this case. It's unbelievable, but it happened. So, let's give it a go. I'm nervous. Yeah. Because <clears throat> if it's a bunch of stuff twisted up, that's a lot. We've been reacting to some... Stuff. So, to begin. You just know this is going to be a nut bar of a case. So let's begin with the where, because I know so many of you only tune in for my geography lessons. Payson, Utah, more like pay me, is <coughs> home for this old video. It's home to approximately 20,000 people, lying south of Provo and Salt Lake City itself. It was also home to a brilliant retired professor by the name of Kay Mortensen. Mortensen. His home, though, hmm, it's kind of a son of a bitch, because home means something different you know, to everyone, right? To some people, you know, wherever I lay my hat, you know what I mean? Other people, they just like to float like a like a leaf on the wind, wherever they go. Some people, they don't yes. want a home, they don't have a home, They home means nothing to them, while others, it's where they can truly be themselves. And it can be their fortress. My shit is my shit and you can pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Kay Mortensen was one of them. Also a poor choice of words, because maybe some folk would take him up on that. Kay Mortensen was a survivalist, which meant for him, if I have to kill you to survive, then you better get your boots on. He did not mess around. Kay was a black belt in karate. He had guns, guns, guns in every room of his house, including his car too. For little girls, it's, you know, a teddy bear. For Kay Mortensen, he had his emotional support <coughs> shot, which does, that sounds pretty cool to be honest. He had his own bunker filled with bunker shit. Cans, water, more guns. Kay and his wife Darla were ready for the nuclear apocalypse. Wow. But he one of those guys that prepare for like doom no day, stuff like that. Okay, I'm going in early. I'm going in early. Bear with me, y'all. Why? I got to. I got to. My detective skills are getting better. Don't play me. All right, y'all. So, if he's a prepperer, if that is a word, we're going to use it, prepperer, he will be ready for stuff. Right? So this has to be somebody who know him. Because he should be prepared for anything that could come at him. Right or wrong. If somebody's got guns and black belt and, and bunkers, I'm expecting them to be ready for anything thrown at them. I mean, you can't be caught slipping, don't get me wrong. But I just I don't I honestly have no idea where this is going because I'm like, okay, he keeps throwing keywords like bunker, prepared, whatever all this. Invasion, time. invasion. We're going into an invasion. invasion. Home invasion. Okay. Mm, I feel like mm, him being old, they feel like, oh, easy. Yeah, but why would he be? You got to be somebody he know, though, because why, why? how would you get a hold of somebody like that? He ready. I he don't stay ready, know. so he ain't got to get ready. Maybe he was an old student. Civil war, a pandemic. Oh, shit. He's right on that one. All of which he was sure were, were coming, so he was lock and load. Funnily enough, so in this day and age, he ready. it does not seem so ridiculous. But I guess he probably would have been quite surprised that the currency of the dystopian future would be toilet paper. He was a bit of a radical, but like not in the in the cowabunga type of way. More in like more in like the way he might actually murder somebody someday. Didn't keep his opinions to himself and was rather frugal, which is odd because he was wealthy. 
hey, I mean, if you really believe, you know, the end of the world, the apocalypse is Can coming. We... Ain't for going to hey, come on. I'm so Smoke him if you got him, right? But Darla, his wife, wasn't too keen on all this business. She accepted it. Getting ready for whatever. That was his you know, tinkering with vintage cars. Oh, and she, she softened his edges a little bit. Darla and Kay met late in life after both had raised families of their own. Kay, he had three grown children, two of whom lived away, but the oldest son, Roger, and his wife, Pam, still lived close to Kay. Roger and Kay, they were close. Roger had suffered a brain injury years back and so was on disability. Kay was retired, so they spent a lot of time together. And Kay was worth millions through investments he had made over the years. He had a successful career teaching mm. courses in manufacturing design, engineering technology, and mechanical technology. Some clues now. Um, the son probably hired somebody or, or friends. Hey, you going like in that. deep, quick. I'm just saying Odds he's worth, he's being worth millions. He has what money. The son? Maybe the son. I don't know. There's I'm just saying. Sons up there. They got I'm the just kids. saying. Well, I'm saying one of his kids probably. Your detective in tennis is I'm early. just saying one of the kids probably did it or. Uh, all right. I'm going to um, let you ride They hired somebody. I'm going to let you ride with it. I'm going to let you ride with it. I... For now. For now. Oh. It might change though. This is what I'm getting. Fessing at Brigham Young for well over three decades. And he was a well-liked teacher who didn't recite from the book. But he told a stories student. and he, he got his students excited and interested. He was also very dedicated to his church. And he'd been on it's various missions spreading the word. But screen went black too quick. On button. the evening of November 16th, 2009, this call, this 911 call was made. Okay. What's the emergency? Uh, Who held the hostage? The guy that had the gun, what did he look like? Was he white guy, black guy, Hispanic? Um, I don't know. How many were there? How many guys were there? Um, there could have been. Were they white, black, Hispanic? Two white. Three white males. Okay, but how? Two, two white males. Two white males? That call, it was made from Kay's house. Now, now Darla, his wife, she was out. She was out of town at the time. She was, she was with her granddaughters. But it wasn't Kay who made the call. Hi, this is, we, we have the police on the way to help you there. Are you sure your dad's, your dad's cold to the touch? Yes. Okay. Too calm, too calm. I sliced his throat. What? But not only did they shoot him, they sliced his throat. Like, this well, is Because I brutal. can't hear, and that's like my eyesight, I can't see. So yeah. I'm like trying to do both that, at the same that time. That is brutal. Like, what? The calmness. The calmness. Well, it's, always, calm. it's always calm. It's always calm. We've been here. This it's is our third son. case. This is it's our third the case. Son and the daughter-in-law. We are now out of the Ricky face. We are in our third case now. This we we always know this it, calmness. It's, it's it's somebody in the family, like you said. It was Roger on the line reporting that Kay was dead. His <laughs> his throat had been cut from ear to ear. By oh. Wow. Someone. Roger and Pam were at the house with the dead Kay, and they had a very weird story to tell. They had driven over to Kay's house to drop off a pie. They were going to give give Kay a pie. He was a big old fan. He was a monster for, for the pecan pies. You know what I mean? So they rocked up. They saw somebody, a stranger's car in the driveway, but they said, all right. Knock, knock, knock on the door. A stranger opened the door to Roger and Pam. They said, okay. is Kay, is he in the house? This guy said, yeah, he is. Come on in, you know. They walked into the house, at which point this guy who opened the door, he pulled a gun on him. And then another man walked out with zip ties. Their oh. wrists and ankles were zip tied by these gunmen who Let told for Roger and Anne, hey, you've seen our faces, you have to die. Then a very peculiar thing happened. These two men, they walked out of the room, presumably to get their guns. And Roger, he started praying, he started praying out loud. When these two men walked back into the room, Roger stopped praying presumably ready to meet his maker. But the guy <clears> said, no, <throat> keep praying. Finish, finish your prayer. These two gunmen, they kind of crossed their hands, they bowed their heads along with, with Roger's prayer. And then when he finished, they said, we've changed our minds. We're not going to kill you. We're not going to kill you. We're going to let you go. But we have a story to tell you and you better tell this exact same story to the police. 
The story okay. was this. Tell the police that three men broke in to Kay's house and bound you, not two. And tell them that the three men were black men, um, not these white men. And then if you tell the police that, you know, that's the story to stick to. And they, they took Roger's driver's license and said, if we find out, you know, you didn't tell the police this exact script, we know where you live. That's what Roger and Pam told the police happened. Uh, this, a lot is off of this. First off, I'm going to start with, I get they were already in the house, but if somebody's coming knocking on the door, and you're you don't prepared, know that. But you're prepared for zip ties. I mean, like you're already. taking a pie. You better know me damn well to take me a pie. But I'm saying you already got zip ties ready for it. <coughs> that, that's that, that's crazy it don't right. make no sense and then there's a story to tell the cops not three not two men but don't, three for my murder mystery cases i didn't seen out here in these streets mm -mm, you, know, you already stuff sound off. guilty if i'm a murderer in somebody's house first of all i'm not opening the door second off you're not looking at my face secondly you coming in here i'm not gonna be like oh, i'm gonna let you go you gotta go too you are now you've seen me you you're a Warren, you're already past a bunch of red flags that shouldn't have been passed you've seen me if i I'm going to take you up high and you don't answer the door you can give it to him bye i'm calling your wife um who's at your house uh somebody call uh, some, you know i ain't never seen that like i said you better know me damn well to bring me a pie hey listen up folks i'm telling you this story the mystery of what happens to Kay mortensen and the story his son told about some quite frankly some some unbelievably scary people his story you know it, it sounded kind mm. of after the men left, they undid their bounds, found Kay upstairs, and called the cops, who hauled ass over. Who hauled ass over? Really? Ain't us the night. This story was um bullshit. It kind of sounds, huh? it, you know, it, it has it has what the French call a je ne sais quoi, which is French for I don't know what, because I don't know uh. what kind of story this is. They told that they assumed people would believe it. It sounds ridiculous. So these two guys break in. They slit the throat of an elder, elderly man, very viciously and brutally, mm -hmm. slit his throat ear to ear. It's pretty hardcore. Vicious. Then when these two other people rock up, they just simply bind them. We're going to kill what them, a but are somehow the prey. <sighs> Too much. So they were hardcore enough to viciously brutal and brutally murder an old man. They forced him to... K. Mortensen. They forced him to kneel over a bathtub and slit his throat like they're collecting his blood mm -hmm. like a pig in a bucket. But it's then, slaughter. praying, praying stopped them from killing Roger and Pam. And then they were like, well, this has been swell. See you later. It wasn't us, remember? Oh, what? Right. God bless you, because I don't think anybody's gonna believe you. The police certainly didn't. And let me, let me tell you, you know, our, are we on Broadway? Because you can say, you know, say it with me now. So, so staged was exactly what the police thought when they were wandering around Kay's house. It didn't look like this kind of weird home invasion at all. Kay had weapons everywhere, and from the sounds of it, he was itching to use them. Exactly. A home invasion would have been his lucky day. Exactly. But he didn't get a chance to use his weapons. Almost like he knew whoever did this. What happened to Kay? People I dragging mean, him upstairs, making child. him kneel over his own bathtub, and slitting and stabbing his throat is exactly. vicious and personal. What if the mom's behind it? That's Didn't why she I wasn't there. I told you my detective skills is no, great. No, you didn't. I said on an initial pause, no, my first guess I did. You didn't say nothing about the mom. I didn't say the mom. I said I, I said it's somebody he knows because okay, he's prepared. Okay, but that, that could have been it. That could have went, went so many ways. But it didn't. But I'm just saying, it went the like, way what that a coincidence I said. this happens when your wife is out with the ch the grandchildren. What a coincidence what that I was right. What if they all just in, sadly plant this so they can get his money? That's probably a part of it. I'm just saying my ranking detective skills is going up. Like, if this is a game, I'm like a seven star out of ten right now. Because I am on these cases. On that ass, as I would say. Okay. I knew it. I already knew it was going down. Stage, somebody know. He prepared. He was prepared. That's what I'm saying. There's no way. It's like... They knew how to catch it's him like, if I'm in my living room, I know where to go. I gun compartment. You know? I gotta start if watching. I'm in the kitchen, people. gun compartment. Like, I know where I'm going to get what I need. And what a coincidence, like, in the bathroom? How? I got to start watching people around my crib now. Cause they can didn't, catch my... didn't Joker do that? They can catch my weak points. Or who is that? They did Joker. a smile like that? The Joker? Joker? Huh. People can catch my weak points. I got to start watching out what people know about how I'm moving and stuff in my house. Nobody's paying attention to you. You don't know. Obviously, uh. K probably thought nobody's paying attention to him. And they got him in a vulnerable moment. Gotta stay. I gotta be ready. You just never know. Guns were stolen from the house. Now, Kay, he had around Take 100 stuff weapons. Too? But the only guns stolen were the ones he kept in the bunker. 
And they were the lock and load everyday guns, not really worth a whole lot. How do you okay, know he had a bunker? In his house. Valuable, collector's edition, Pokemon card style, you know, very expensive guns <laughs> that would fetch quite a lot. They weren't stolen. Either the intruders were unaware, or they wanted to make it look like a robbery, but didn't actually want to lose the valuable things. Mm. Mm. Now, a number of tips they come in, but it all went nowhere. This person may have had a grudge, this person owed money, this person stole guns. All these led nowhere, alibis of the wazoo. No, I kept coming back to Roger and Pam. At the front this door, right. my wife was holding a pie right here. She either knocked on the door or rang the doorbell. I believe she knocked on the door. I had this door open okay. because I knocked on the wooden door. Sure. I didn't ring the doorbell. And I said, is Kay here? They proceeded to say he is and said he was upstairs and they let us in. You said your wife did one or the other. She did none of them. She did none of them. She All didn't either. Right. All right. All right. Let me say this right she now. She didn't either. Oh my my mama had a screen door once upon a time in her life. These mama got a screen door right now. I ain't never once upon a time in my life opened the screen door and knocked on the door with a doorbell sitting there. Unless the doorbell is broken, there's no reason for that. Well, that, Bert, that don't even make sense. He said she knocked on the door or she rang the doorbell. She literally didn't need there. She opened the door and, and knocked not. on the wooden door. Why not ring the damn doorbell? He's upstairs. If you are, okay, so from what I'm saying, this is his 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 daughter-in-law, right? Because it's his son. Mm-hmm. As a daughter-in-law or as a son, you know all of your parents' friends and stuff like that around the neighborhood and stuff. If he looked like a whole stranger, Just lie. where's the pie? I need to know that you really brought a pie. They didn't. Where's the pie? The other guy shut the door. I turned around to look. Somebody was walking down the stairs with a gun in their hand. He pointed at us and said, you're here at the wrong time. Get it out. Put out your hands. <clears throat> I took the knife and I cut my wire tie and I cut my wife's How wire tie. Knife? I said, stay here. I'll see if their car is gone. And I got up and I walked up these steps. I looked out the window to where the vehicle was parked and it was now gone. I came back downstairs and, I, and my wife was talking at the time to 911 dispatch. And I said, he is dead. I Roger and Pam, who didn't seem at all frazzled by like what happened to them. Frazzled exactly. Down. And when they were questioned, they couldn't even tell the same story at all. They kept getting, ooh, uh, no, maybe it went like this. Ooh, wait, actually, so sorry. Yeah, no. My name's Eric Knudsen, by the way. He's a dangerous old fart and set his mouth to everybody. And they had blue fuzzy gloves. They looked like women's winter driving gloves or something. The fuzzy kind. They had, I know they had purple gloves purple you know quite frankly i think the story is a bunch of crap mm -hmm. i think the story is a bunch of crap that you and roger have come Diarrhea. up with okay so you don't believe me, but... i'm trying no. to Does it sound too rehearsed or yeah okay is your husband capable of killing somebody i need to get a drink i wouldn't hope i mean i wouldn't think he is I wouldn't think that he's capable of killing his father. When the police did a search of Roger and Pam's home, they found a lot of unpaid bills. Motive. Not so beneficiary, but I get a big share did of I not say it. I know we're in a lot of debt, but we, I personally, That's would not said. have my father in law killed. Because your father they ain't got no millions. That's why. She, 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 I said she it. They did it for the money. But that's For odd. all you know, like... Um, did him and his father have like a bad relationship? Because if your father a millionaire... Where always... is the mother? Where's the mother? Where's the mother? My thing is, <clears throat> unless him and his dad had a bad relationship, if yeah. you in debt, he a millionaire, I'm pretty sure he would have gave you the money. Unless they... Unless, that's what I'm saying. Unless yeah. they had a bad relationship. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure he would have been like... I'm just you? saying, I already called it. Once they said millions, I knew immediately. Immediately. What if the insurance wasn't even in his name? He did all this. Like, just say you That's got away. That's like where's the mom? She probably in on it. Where's the mother? The attack, personal. And it seemed like someone with intimate knowledge of the house did it. Kay protected his house like a guard dog. It must have been someone who knew him who got in. Mm -hmm. And they seemed like it was a story they rehearsed, but kept mixing up the details. Mm -hmm. Came back downstairs and, I, and my wife was talking at the time to 911 dispatch and I said, he is say? dead. Saying that in the same way you might if 
The ice cream machine at McDonald's was broken. Polygraphs were done, and they were found to be deceptive. Polygraphs are nonsense, no shit, but what they do <coughs> is put more pressure on a suspect, and it seemed like this was not helping Roger and Pam's case at all. Police are releasing new evidence regarding the murder of former BYU professor Kay Mortensen. BYU Daily News reporter Ryan Fowler shows us what police are, show, are telling us now. Mortensen's uh, murder back in November shocked Utahns, and now months later, police are naming people of interest and releasing more information yes, to the public. Basically, Roger and Pamela have provided statements that have been inconsistent uh, to basic, the, you know, the basic 911 call, along with being inconsistent with the crime scene itself. You're on 911. You just seen, you just seen, because we're going off of their story. You just seen your dad and father-in-law murdered. Um, you were held hostage. You're not frantic at all. Where's the frantic at? And then you're on 911. Oh, yeah. I think, oh, he's dead. Like, where's uh, the, I mean, see, this is what I'm talking about. If you're going to plan a murder or murder somebody, you need to have your freaking ducks in a line. And they're not, they're giving themselves up immediately. They're giving themselves up. You know what I was thinking about? Why even call the police if you killed them? Because they needed a storyline. No, you could have not been there at that point. Why are you even calling? Now you got to fabricate a whole story. Why are you there? Y'all could have did what you did and just left. And now that they, they, somebody can discover him, like, it, I mean, come on, You have a point. That's that. You do have a point. I have, I I, look, that, I have to get out of the... That is true. Like, why call the cops on yourself? I have to get out of detective mode and go to the murder. I got to be the murderer now. Can't they be... The, I, now you got to put yourself in the murderer's shoes. You, you don't can, got neighbors? It just... Oh, Nobody got neighbors? It ain't making sense, y'all. I'm just saying, like, neighbors can't be like, oh, we seen them. We didn't see nobody else. Like, where's the neighbors? I'm still... Where's the mom? Where Please is the mom? Asking people to keep their ears open and to contact them with any information that they might have about this investigation. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. The pressure was growing. Roger and Pam hired lawyers. They stopped talking to the police and the investigation continued. Why? It continued until the following summer in July 2010 when Roger and Pam were indicted by a grand jury, which is when evidence is presented to a jury to decide if they should be charged or not charged with a crime. The jury decided to charge Roger and Pam with the murder of Kay Mortensen. What? There was no evidence that anyone else was there. And Roger and Pam, not looking great. In, fa in fact, looking pretty gnarly. They both protested their innocence. In fact, <coughs> Pam was offered a deal and she turned it down. She was so sure of her innocence. Are they innocent? However, as the trial was rounding up for, for Roger and Pam, a call, a phone call, came in. A phone call which led to this conversation. Oh. I was just walking out, and I just watched the news, and these people are going to go to jail. Because then probably like this. They pulled out their guns and told him to put the tie on. He said that he wasn't willing at first, but he eventually just said that they took him to the bathroom and sent him over the tub. He said that right after that, they heard the door, the doorbell ring, and it was two. Rachel said. <laughs> What? Did we get this wrong? Did we just fuck out? I was on to some stuff. Oh my god, we just No, nah, no, they lying too. They ain't no way. I was on. I'm on to something. You're not about to get my detective skills down to a, a 4.9. First off, I was right. They are lying. No, hell no. It didn't add up. No, what? these people in on it too. No, who is these people? <laughs> I don't know. No. A whole year later, because it said the next summer. A you whole know year what? Later. I'm going to start taking notes because this don't make sense. <clears throat> no. That her ex husband. Martin Bond and a friend of his, Benjamin Reddick, were the ones who went to Kay's house that day. Why? She knew this because they told her. They told her everything. They were there for his guns. Why'd they tell you? He knew that his wife was going home soon, and I think that's why he didn't put much of a, a, a struggle. He said that Ben, um, that Ben cut his throat, and then stabbed him in the back of the neck. But I read in the news that he was in the back of five times, so I don't know if Martin told lie about it or if Martin helped kill him up. Um, either way, Martin was definitely more of the... Dang, her story sounds good. I don't know. Interest more about the two. They decided that it was just, that they probably were safe to not kill him. I don't know what exactly was not. But they said that he said he came back and they both told them what story that they should tell the cops. If they didn't, then they would 
come back and kill them and get them and whatever else. Yeah, we have OPD involved. That's why you guys found absolutely no evidence. So who the shit were Martin and Benjamin? Well, it turned out that Martin Bond, the ex-husband of this this woman, was the son of a very close friend of Kay Mortensen's. Kay had known Martin since he was knee high to a grasshopper. So Kay, let him in. Come on in, you know? I'll put the coffee on. This wasn't a home invasion <coughs> at all. This was a home welcoming. Kay had no guard up whatsoever. He didn't. Why would he need a music? He's known Martin since he was a he was a baba, baba. But of course, once inside, Martin and Benjamin, they tied Kay up and they stole his guns. That's what they were there for. They then brought him upstairs and started sawing his throat open. They had driven there that day with those intentions, bringing a 40 caliber handgun, zip ties, and latex gloves. They knew Kay had a lot of guns and that they would be worth a good bit of money. So they knocked on his door. Kay welcomed him in. Once they were in inside his house, though, they whipped out their own irons, demanding to be taken to his valuable guns. But Kay, being a sharp cookie that he was, he led them downstairs to the bunker, to his shitty guns that weren't worth much at all. Then, knowing that he had seen their face, they took him upstairs, they grabbed a butcher's knife from his own kitchen, and that was the end of Kay Mortensen. Just as they were finished with him, Roger and Pam showed up. That's all bad. I judged him. In their innocence. I mean, it's their fault though. Like, yeah, y'all, y'all made yourselves look. Very they were startled, guilty. okay? They was in the house. They they seen the little girl. They was startled. Okay, but okay, where's where's your emotions? They probably was still under them, you know, messed up. You don't know. You never been to a case, been through nothing like that. You don't know what it's like. Well, every lawyer has their bad days. Oh my okay? god! Every lawyer has their bad cases, and we, my badge can be taken for this. We um. We weren't sure though. We wait. We wait till the end to just to you know. I can't believe I was this far off. I I was good on the first. Time. I, but I, if 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 we want to be honest, I did say it was somebody close to the family, whatever. So I kind of did still win this one. You jumped to conclusions and said the the kids. Uh, Martin, he took the guns. He he sold some. He kept some in his house and he buried some others. Scott free of all of us, with Roger and Pam going almost going on trial for it until he jail. was stupid enough fucking guy to tell his ex-wife about what he did bragging about it and then she having a her conscience hearing about what you yeah. know roger and pam were going through in the news all the time she was like <clears throat> i can't let this happen so she did what she did roger and pam were in jail in prison for five months dang before they were set free it's a long time for more than a year, Utah County authorities had suspected Kay Mortensen's son and daughter-in-law in the murder of the retired BYU professor. Today, these two men were arrested for the crime as prosecutors dropped the charges against Roger and Pamela Mortensen to the delight of their attorneys. Their story now appears to be true as Martin Bond and Ben Reddick have been arrested for the crime. This tip that uh, that ultimately came in was the key piece of information that we did not have, that ultimately we were able I to confirm. Key evidence. That's Bond all is, is believed to have known Kay Mortensen through his father and had been to the house before. It's believed the motive for the killing was Mortensen's extensive firearm collection. Detectives recovered 20 of the stolen guns near Vernal. We have always made the statement that if we you could find the weapons, then we would know the story. While authorities are clearly embarrassed in the mistaken prosecution of the Mortensons, they insist they never gave up on following other leads in the investigation. Roger's brain injury helped indict him. He failed a polygraph because of that. Pam got details wrong because it was a stressful situation, and that's why things were off. Mm -hmm. And why the phone call was weird, they weren't sure to tell the real story, or the killer's story. When questioned, Martin, initially, he denied the story. What you on about? until the police found some of Kay's guns in his house. And he and Ben pointed the finger at each other, saying the other one killed Kay while they watched. This was an orchestrated event. Ben could not orchestrate Columbus this damn hair. Ben made some random decisions, and I tried to clean things and make them orderly as to avoid getting in trouble. It was Ben. Absolutely, 100%, it was Ben. Who cut his throat? It's Marty. Who cut hey. his throat? It's Marty. Who cut it? It's Marty. Who? Marty. Marty who? I swear to God. Marty Bond. Mm. They tentatively said hello. And uh, 
and they just kind of walked in. And uh, at that point, I said, "This is uh, the uh, one." And um, you know, obviously pretty shocked at that point. Roger cried a lot, and um, Pam was a little more calm. Um, she basically was just very agreeable, saying, "We'll say anything you want us to say." Um, I thought that was crying more than crying. Too much had been done already. Like this, it was some amazing thing more to happen. So just said then, you know, we're done, no more. This is it. Leave them be. I just threatened them, scare them, leave. It was a pretty <laughs> deal for them. That, that it sucks. You know, they were missing it. They didn't know for some joke. They told what happened. As I said, saying the other murdered while they watched. But I should have stopped it, blah, blah, blah. They also cleared Roger and Pam completely. Though talking to one snitch in jail, Martin admitted he had killed Kay but he had done it because Ben was pointing a gun at him. 23-year-old Ben Reddick agreed to plead guilty to the aggravated murder and aggravated kidnapping of Kay, and for that he was sentenced to 25 years to life. All this Martin for some pleaded not guilty, but was ultimately found to be so, and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Dang. Anything they could do to humiliate me, they did. It was terrible. Yeah. He and his wife were Silly. wrongly accused of killing his father. No, that's coming. Today, Roger and Pamela Mortensen broke their silence about their ordeal of being arrested and intimidated by police when they were, in fact, themselves victims of a heinous crime. We were falsely incarcerated and that we aren't the people that we were made out to be. They were at a loss as to what to do, and it was easier for them to blame us than to actually spend the time to look at who could be guilty. But I mean, if we're really thinking about it, how, if, if they, they were doing their job and everything pointed to them, sadly, I mean, there's a lot of, that up, that yeah, you know, of course, there's a lot of, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of innocent people out there that get convicted for, um, you know, the wrong, um, crime or whatever. But what sucks is that, yes, the investigation on them were wrong but if that lady never came forward they could be in jail for this. they could have been in jail forever so it's like damn like they, they really didn't have no other evidence saying that they were not guilty and it's sad i think what about their stories and that up it makes sense now with the 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 son crying the whole time he probably wasn't paying attention and like couldn't hear where she they said she was calm agreeable mm -hmm. green and everything so she knew everything that was going on yeah where he just hysterically didn't probably catch a piece by piece or something yeah and that's why the story is i just feel like you that. threw your life away over some guns right. that you went and buried but he didn't even get the rare ones they said he led them to the regular ones because he knew they said he knew he, he must have felt it and it's so sad because what the guy said, he was like, he knew his wife was going to come home. So he kind of had to hurry mm -hmm. up and do whatever was going to be done. So like, that is die. so sad. Who knew? Who knew? Going to deliver your dad a pie. You going to cry. We'll stir this up. And so ends the story of Kay Mortensen. A story that it didn't end with his dad. It ended with his son and his son's wife being dragged through the entirety of the legal system. And everybody believing that they had murdered your own dad when they were victims here too for almost a year. Pure shite. Until amazingly and luckily enough, somebody called in, mm -hmm. which wouldn't even have happened if Martin had been kind of, you know, stupid enough to say it to his ex-wife. I mean, if, if she hadn't called, would Martin, or would um, Pam and Roger be in prison to yeah. this I very so. day? Kind of makes I you think about all the cases, you know, covered. You kind of got to wonder, are some of these bad guys, like, not bad guys at all? Exactly. They shouldn't have, like, they're innocent. Exactly, And I the said real that. killer is out there amongst us, maybe be standing behind you right now, maybe even watching this whole video. Me, bro, don't trip. Who knows? But, I mean, the police are really ready to get Roger and Pam, and... But, I mean, yeah, at least they, they got the right guys by themselves. To the, to the story. But, well, the, the, the right guys, even the bad guys kind of got got by themselves, so the police didn't actually go get... Mm -hmm. This is all dumb shit. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching this old video with me. Yeah, because in reality, like you, the the cops and all that, they have to they have to feel like they can solve this case, and they gotta put a face to the case. But I think what they like he said, they didn't even try to look for some like other people. It was just straight up like they they they, they it that this is them. Yeah. Like, they didn't even try to say like oh there's nothing. I mean, but we're being honest, we did too. Yeah, but we ain't professionals. They are professionals. 
Maybe don't play. maybe we shouldn't jump right off the bat. No, I'm maybe I'm we going, should wait to the don't end. Don't take away my judgments because uh look, listen, okay. I was I'm right gonna, because I said it had to be someone that the family. I knew. said somebody knew. I did say that in the beginning. But I don't understand. Like you did all this for some guns. Like they wanted the rare ones that was worth money. <clears throat> but even if you did, okay, hypothetically speaking, let's say they got the guns. They let they didn't kill him. They go pawn it or sell it, whatever. Pawn it. It's gonna come back to show that First they bought off, it. There's a black market for this type of stuff. Not that I there, know. Okay, I know but that. You can go out there and sell I, it on the streets. I know that. You don't have to sell it out there. I know. No, you can sell but... it on the streets and get some ching ching for it. I don't know nothing about just, none of that. I'm, I'm like, just going off of stuff I've seen on TV. Who would have known that a pie will have someone die? I'm done. Who would have known? Y'all, but I'll be serious. Who would have known that you no, taking your dad yeah, a pie would have had you suspected as murderers and killing your own dad? You better start announcing yourself before you go to my house. Dad, I'm, I'm going to come bring you through. a pie, letting you know. I'm coming through. But still, like, that is mind-blowing. This and the fact that he crazy. Ra- he, he seen him, not racing, but he's seen him grow up as a kid. I feel like every what case. What made him feel that, like, mm, something's up. What I, feel like, I feel like every case we react to, I feel like one is, like, like well, every time we do one, I'm Everybody's like, dang. Everybody's close. No, but I'm saying, like, I'm like, dang, this story is crazy. But then I get to the next one, it's, it's like, like, dang, this crazy, too. And then it's now we here, and it's like, dang, this is crazy. <laughs> they all crazy. But what a coincidence. They're all from people that's close or know them. start watching my surroundings, y'all told you. Oh, my God. Well, burn. Don't. Don't do it. I just, oh, my goodness. To the next one, y'all. Send over the next one, y'all. Y'all sent this one over. This one was good. What is y'all verdict on this one? How do y'all feel? Let us know down below in the comment section. Because our verdict was kind of prejudged. So we can't really see our verdict no more. Because obviously they're not guilty. But not guilty for them. But guilty for the other one. See y'all on the next journey.